Hello all, welcome to this course on computer organization. Today's discussion will start off as a continuation of the multi-cycle control unit from the previous video and performance analysis of multi-cycle processor. I will be using the data flow for load or store instruction to explain R-type and BEQ instruction. So let's begin. If the opcode indicates an R-type instruction, the multi-cycle processor must calculate the result using the ALU and write that result to the register file. In S6, the instruction is executed by selecting ALU SRC A as 1 to select register A, ALU SRC B as 00, 0 to select register B, and perform ALU operation indicated by the func field of the instruction. ALU OP is 10 for all R type instructions. The ALU result is stored in ALU out. In S7, ALU out is written to the register file. So reg DST is 1 because the destination is specified in the RD field of the instruction. That is bits 11 to 15. Mem to reg is 0 because the write data WD3 comes from ALU out. Reg write is asserted to write the register file. This will be 1. For a BEQ instruction, the processor must calculate the destination address and compare the two source registers to determine whether the branch should be taken. This requires two uses of the ALU and hence might seem to demand two new states. Notice however that the ALU was not used during S1 that is the decode stage when the registers were being read. The processor might as well use the ALU of that time to compute the destination address by adding the incremented PC, PC plus 4 to sign immediate multiplied by 4. Here ALU SRC A is 0 to select the incremented PC. ALU SRC B is 1 1 to select the sign immediate multiplied by 4. And ALU OP is 0 0 to add. The destination address is stored in ALU out. If the instruction is not BEQ, then the computed address will not be used in subsequent cycles, but its computation was harmless. In S8, the processor compares the two registers by subtracting them and check to determine whether there is a zero. If it is, the processor branches to the address that was just computed. ALU SRC A is 1 to select register A. ALU SRC B is 0, 0 to select register B. ALU OP is 0, 1 for subtraction. PC SRC is 1 to take the destination address from ALU out. And branch is asserted. This will be 1 to update the program counter with this address if the ALU result is 0. Putting these steps together shows the complete main controller transition diagram for multi cycle processor. Now we will move on to the performance analysis of a multi cycle processor. The execution time of an instruction depends on both the number of cycles it uses and the cycle time. Whereas 
the single cycle processor performed all instructions in one cycle. The multi cycle process use varying number of cycles for various instructions. However, the multi cycle processor does less work in a single cycle and thus has a shorter cycle time. The multi cycle processor requires three cycles for BEQ and jump instruction, four cycles for store, add immediate and R type instruction, and five cycles for load instruction. CPI or cycles per instruction depend on the relative likelihood that each instruction is used. Recall that we designed the multi cycle processor so that each cycle involved ALU operation, memory access, or register file access. Let us assume here that the register file is faster than memory and writing memory is faster than reading memory. In a previous video on the performance analysis of MIPS, we saw that seconds per cycle also known as clock period in the total execution time is determined by the critical path through logic on processor. Now critical path is the slowest path in the circuit. It is a combination of clock to queue time for register, combinational delay and setup time. Clock to queue time is the time it takes from when the clock edge comes to register output changes. Combinational delay is the slowest or longest path in combinational logic. Setup time is the time that the register requires the input to be stable before the clock comes. Keeping these information in mind, when we examine the data path, it reveals two possible critical paths that would limit the cycle time. This is given by the dotted lines here. One is reading the memory and the other is going through ALU. On deducting the critical path here, we'll end up having this equation for cycle time which is given by propagation delay for clock to queue added to propagation delay in multiplexer added with the maximum of either the propagation delay of ALU added to propagation delay of multiplexer or the propagation delay in memory again added to the setup time. Also note that the numerical values of time here depend on specific implementation technology. That's all for now. Thank you. Thank you for listening.